Bitcoin wallets can be hard to conceptualize and their components can be confusing. Seed phrases, private keys, xpubs, plain public keys, addresses. What's the difference between all these terms and how do they fit together? If you're not sure, you've come to the right video. Let's get into it. To approach this topic, we'll move chronologically in the order that things are created to build a modern Bitcoin wallet. We'll start from scratch and finish at the addresses used to receive Bitcoin into the wallet arrangement. Step one, entropy. Our initial goal when building a Bitcoin wallet from scratch is to create the master private key which will control the wallet. The first step of this involves something called entropy. The master private key we're trying to create is really just a secretive large number. Entropy means using unpredictable randomness to arrive at that number, so it would be practically impossible for anyone else to guess it. This unpredictable randomness could come from many possible sources, such as flipping a coin 256 times, or rolling a bunch of dice, or using a specialized algorithm within a hardware wallet. Once this entropy is generated, it's important to keep a record of it so that the master private key we're trying to create can be calculated again in the future. This takes us to the next step, a seed phrase. To record entropy, we could theoretically just write down a bunch of numbers. However, this approach could easily lead to a mistake that might not be immediately realized. So instead, we use what's called a seed phrase. A seed phrase is created by translating numbers into words using what's called the BIP39 word list. A hardware wallet will do this automatically and show the words to the user to write down. Recording words instead of random numbers helps guard against mistakes. Seed phrases are extremely sensitive information because they can provide access to wallet funds by producing the master private key, which we'll cover next. Step three, master private key. A seed phrase can be imported into a hardware wallet and then converted into some numbers called a seed, which serves as a brief intermediary to then immediately create the master private key. This is the secret number which will ultimately control the wallet being built. Users are not typically shown their master private key directly to discourage them from trying to record the number. For the reasons mentioned earlier, it's better just to keep a record of the seed phrase instead, which can always be used to recreate the same master private key later on. In a sense, entropy, seed phrases, seeds, and master private keys are all very similar and equally sensitive. However, they're not exactly equivalent because there is a specific order in which they are created. Step four, extended public keys. A master private key can produce and reproduce a tree of many other keys. The next term you should know is an extended public key, or XPUB for short. A master private key can produce practically unlimited extended public keys, and each one could serve as the primary ingredient for building a wallet. One XPUB is all that's needed to create a single SIG wallet. This means that a master private key could control many different single SIG wallets, such as if someone wanted to organize funds into separate piles. Alternatively, an XPUB could be contributed towards a multi-sig wallet, which would combine the XPUB with other XPUBs that came from other master private keys. Ultimately, just one master private key and its one seed phrase can participate in protecting any number of different single sig and multi-sig wallets. XPUBs are less sensitive than the master private key. While a master private key can provide approval for spending Bitcoin, an XPUB cannot. Instead, an XPUB is used to build wallets, check balances, and receive Bitcoin. Therefore, XPUBs are often exported from the hardware wallet to an internet-connected device, such as a computer or phone. Step five, plain public keys. Once we have an XPUB, we've essentially succeeded in creating a Bitcoin wallet. But what even is a wallet anyway? A wallet can be thought of as a collection of addresses, each of which can receive Bitcoin and become added to the records of the Bitcoin blockchain. So we aren't done yet, we still need to discuss how these addresses are created. An XPUB can produce additional keys of its own. It can create practically unlimited plain public keys, which can each serve as a main ingredient for building an address. Plain public keys are typically hidden from the view of end users because they only serve as a stepping stone to reach the addresses that the user will actually be interacting with. Step six, addresses. An address is a string of letters and numbers that can be shared with other people to receive Bitcoin from them. We've done a video all about addresses, which you can find using the card on your screen or the link in the video description. In this diagram, we see how the addresses for a single SIG wallet are created. One master private key produces an XPUB, and the XPUB produces plain public keys, 
each of which can build an address. Meanwhile, the addresses that make up a multi-sig wallet are built with a bit more complexity. This diagram shows the structure of a two of three multi-sig wallet. Beginning with three master private keys, each of them creates its own XPUB to be contributed towards the multi-sig structure. Then each XPUB can produce an ordered list of plain public keys. The first plain public key from each list is brought together to create the first address and so on down the list. Also included in the addresses are the multi-sig quorum rules that enforce the fact that at least two out of the three private keys are required to approve spending Bitcoin out of the address. And with that, we've covered the main components of a Bitcoin wallet. There are additional technical details that can be explored, but the information in this video should serve as a strong foundation to understanding common terminology and how to think about how wallets are structured. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, we'd appreciate it if you give the video a like and subscribe to see similar videos in the future. Thanks for watching.